don't get enough views. You get entirely too many views, considering the quality of content you put out. Well, gee, tell me how you really feel. Okay, I would like more views. You can just replicate past success. Past success? Relative success. Like, uh, let's see, your most viewed video is your childhood trauma video. Fucking still? I, I can't do that again. There's Killer Bean Forever. That was a fluke. That wasn't even popular till like six months after I put it up. Cool Cat always does well. Uh, yeah, let me know when Daddy Derek finally makes another movie. Well, you got one more option. Yeah? You could finally make Video Brinkato Volume 2. Oh, God fucking damn it. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew. Sad little Matthew. Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew gonna drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones around to be had. Today's episode Video Brinkato Volume 2. Hello Internet, I'm Cold Matt, and uh, it's been about two years since I did my first Video Brinkato video, where I sort of implied there would be a follow-up, and uh, I'm just not getting to it. But look, I've been busy. That's a lie, I just didn't want to do it. Video Brinkato needs no introduction at this point. They're a shitty Brazilian animation studio that makes mockbusters of films from Pixar, DreamWorks, and the like. You know, when DreamWorks isn't already ripping people off. Today I've elected to look at two movies that are a bit more on the DreamWorks side. The first is Little and Big Monsters, a movie people say is a ripoff of Monsters vs. Aliens. Which, mm, maybe? They certainly didn't capitalize on it as blatantly as What's Up or Ratatoing. Although speaking of What's Up, that video is actually a sequel to this one. I did not know that at the time I made my first video. I mean, who decided to make a sequel to their Monsters vs. Aliens ripoff an up ripoff? I think it was only because the old guy from this movie kinda looks like Carl from Up. Side note, apparently What's Up is the lowest rated thing I've ever rated on IMDb. Good. Wait, Toyland video? Okay, technically Brinkato means toy, but calling my video toy videos wouldn't get nearly as many views. You're obstinate, aren't you? Better. I joked last episode about needlessly complicated Rube Goldbergs to prove how smart the main character is, but this is Video Brinkato, so of course, even that is lame. All this does is count days, my phone does that. Oh, but it is Halloween. Oh, and Carl has a robot in this one. So they're kinda putting more effort into this than what's up? They're still racist against the Chinese, though. <laughs> For crying out loud, it must be a virus. I'm sure I unsubscribed from that darn Chinese news channel. On the other hand, the animation is way more janky. And I'll give them credit for one improvement. Amanda's hair looks awful in this one, so they fixed that. Okay, but we cleaned the photoplasma lithium pistols just in case, so you always know if anything happens, you can count on us. I just told you that I don't want you messing around with these things. They are very powerful weapons. Well, each of these horrible animated movies comes with one of these, uh, free jokes where I don't sync up the audio correctly to, uh, make a point about how bad the dubbing is, so I'll just turn that into you and, uh, <clears throat> yes, very natural movements. So Dr. Carl and his partner are building an antenna and talk to aliens. 
And one of the journalists is helpful enough to give us an exposition dump. What about our security? We're still pretty traumatized by the images of that film showing how you fought off those terrible aliens during the infamous invasion of 54. Subsequently, you got the money for this antenna and said that we'd need it to ask for help in case of a new attack. Do you think we're safer now? Can I go with you, please? No, you stay here. You're too immature to handle a machine like this. <laughs> She just throws a switch, and he just wanted to go with her. He didn't even have to throw the switch. So after killing him, an alien imposter takes over Gus's life. Oh, I can't wait to get back to the laboratory! I bet the antenna's already picked up messages. No, young lady, you need to get your brother home. Um, the antenna is right next to her house. And Gus has a fucking Little Cars poster. It's still got the DVD logo. I can't stand machines! I hate them! What a bunch of hunks of junk! If only one of them would work! The next morning, the alien cocooned in Gus's brain has hatched. Heaven help us and all human beings! This is horrible! He's destroying everything! Wait, is the alien... off-screen? They have a model for the monsters, just show it! <laughs> a Venusian Star Fragment! Venusian Star Fragments? Venusian means from Venus. We have the same star as Venus. Oh, and the monster's fucking killing everyone. The wrath of destruction is terrible. In an instant, the monster mercilessly tore apart a garden. Turn it off, Guto. And for some reason, has run into the zoo. It's sheer madness. Run for your lives! It just growled, showing his enormous pointed teeth. Obviously, it's not here to make friends. No, certainly it's diabolical. It just wants to eat our body parts like snack foods. Guto, turn it off. It's in the zebra pen now. Poor little zebra. Your black stripes seem faded and white with fear. It's kind of funny, actually. Also, uh, the alleged invasion of 58 was faked by Dr. Carl and his partner. Monsters don't exist! We invented everything! That story about an invasion of monsters we made up was just so that the government would invest in our interplanetary communication project! Surely he knows this already. Dr. Zooks, my niece! My niece will find out! And when she does, she'll no longer respect me! This movie is half over! Are you gonna fight the monster or not? We went ahead of you with the Photoplasma Lithium guns because we knew it was urgent. Ah, yes. So easy to read. Well, apparently Gus and Amanda ran off with the guns, so guess they're gonna die, but at least they're trying. Or, I guess they didn't steal the photon guns because they're only holding the salt laser. Cause salt defeats the monsters. Oops, spoilers. Oh man, it's my favorite GTA glitch. I need to tell you the truth, Amanda. Forgive me. I'm a fake. A complete fraud. It was all a lie. We made up the invasion of 54. Yet you've told us this like four fucking times. They sneak into the killer lasagna to escape the monster. And while Gus is trying to salt his popcorn, the monster jumps through and the salt shrinks him. Also, Popcorn Guy is best character. <laughs> Good for nothing, kids! These days they walk all over you! Even an old popcorn vendor! There's no respect for the corn! When's it all gonna stop? Gus and Amanda sneak out to fight the monster with all the salty food they can find. Swallow these salty peanuts! I'll just let you make the joke, okay? But some aliens show up and steal the monster. After fiddling with their translator, they begin to speak with Gus and Amanda. Let me introduce ourselves. We're ETs. Green and spindly. Oh, no, I mean green and loudly. Oh, God. no, green and friendly. I think you mean... Brown and friendly. Also, the aliens reveal the monsters get bigger when they eat sugar. Okay. Luckily, there's only one left, but he just got into a lot of ice cream. Uncle Crumb! Activate the hyperbionic wings! Oh, 
Hey, Hyper Bionic Wings activated! There's not wings on that. I'd be more upset, but this movie's fried my brain. Crack! There's no time to go back! What do you mean, no time to turn around? You have plenty of time to turn around. That's not how lasers work. That shit is stupid in other movies when they do it with normal lasers. But this is a salt laser. It just shoots salt. You can't reflect salt. Although it's made me very salty. Anyway, the aliens leave and the humans become Ghostbusters. The end. Up next, I'd like to talk about the little bee. It's odd to me that B-Movie even has rip-offs. Sure, it was marketed to death, but it made almost no cultural impact until years later when it became a meme. Shrek, on the other hand, was a success right from the start, but the closest thing I can find to a Shrek ripoff is Donkey Xodi, and that's just because the donkey is clearly based on donkey. Anyway, this is about a bee named... Bee Nod. Fuck this, the views aren't worth it. Who am I kidding? Yes, they are. Beanard? Surely you can try harder than that. There's another character named Beauty. Fine, I can live with that. But I cannot and will not accept Beanard. Brunard gets into trouble for trying to make honey, even though he's supposed to be a soldier. Know your place. And each hive has how many queens? One queen! You know, I'd make some point about fucking the system, but I'm kind of distracted by how much their teacher sounds like Miss Censordall from Moral Oral. Maybe it's because they're both obviously voiced by men. Drones are so way gross. Don't even think about it. Listen, I have dreams, ambitions, and nearly limitless wealth. Whatever I want, I'm gonna get. Gosh, being a princess sure sounds nice. If I was a princess, I would have a huge party and invite the whole hive to celebrate, and since everybody would be- Oh my god, stop talking. You're in a class. Just finish the fucking class. Oh, and Beauty wants to be a soldier. Which, I guess, is lucky for her, because female bees do everything. Men are just drones for reproduction. I don't know, though. Shit like that confuses me. If the queen can give birth to one sex, but needs that sex to make the other sex, that sounds a little more complicated than male and female. And how do male seahorses get pregnant? Couldn't we just call the ones who get pregnant females then? Just switch the names, it's not like the animals will ever know the difference. Sorry, I'd just rather talk about the enigma of gender than talk about this fucking movie. What's happening? Bernard has a soldier training? Cool. I see. So, you're a cook. <laughs> this follows the plot of Ratatouille closer than Ratatoing did. Check out this action-packed sequence. <laughs> have a real gift. Of course I do. My rear is in gear. A children's character just said she got her rear in gear. There's a there's an anal sex joke in there, but it's just not worth it. So Beauty and Bernard develop a plan to sneak him into the kitchen so he can cook honey. You might call it mm -hmm. And then they make honey. Your Majesty, why do I bother? Same. Absolutely right. I, for one, can't stand how disrespectful the students are. It's as though none of them values the importance of tradition. Not one of my students appreciates it. You know, I appreciate the fuck the system undertones, but it's the fucking little bee. They don't have the follow-through to make this enjoyable. 
There's no need to bother with intelligence. Yet another motto for Video Brinkato. Wow, that girl bee has incredible aim. She's way better than most soldiers. And I'm pretty sure that's Beanard who never does what he's supposed to. What an interesting combination. I wonder what they're up to. I better keep a close eye on those guys. Boy, you just never shut up, do you? <laughs> oh, gee. Is this a song? Is is Video Brinkato doing a song? I am but one man. I do not have the power in me for a next to express how little I want to listen to this song. I'll do it. Oh, badass man. Yes, it's me, Badass Matt, Space Lumberjack. And by the power vested in me by all the badasses of the universe, I declare this song unworthy of being listened to. And henceforth, we shall skip to the next scene, as I declare with the mighty word... NEXT! Thanks, man. So the hive is about to be torn down because the honey chef makes bad honey, but Bernard makes good honey. Luckily, there's a tear in the guy's suit so they can sing him. Marching, marching to protect the hive. Is this another song? Why? Why? Badass Matt. <sighs> Next. Anyway, the princess figures out they need better tasting honey. Something she says in a thousand fucking words. Aha! That's what they're up to. They want to destroy the hive because the honey is no good anymore. <sighs> what can I do? It's gonna be dark soon. I better come up with something. Fast! So they make better honey. But the humans are back, and this time they brought a smoker, which, uh... Would have been really helpful the first time around. These are pathetically small swarms of bees. Well, this is it. We gotta do it. We need to pour the honey now. It's up to you. You're the only one who can fly fast enough to open the valve and make the honey flow out. Excuse me, what? Why would they fly so far from the hive if time is of the essence? Also, how is beauty not faster? <gasps> Oh, I guess beauty's dead now. Cause you know, bees die when they sting people. Anyway, Bernard gets the honey flowing and the guy decides he's not gonna destroy the hive. Well, we all followed our hearts and we ended up saving the day! Uh-huh, <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Please stop. You know, the character might have lived, but beauty is definitely dead. Do I even need to say these films are bad? Like, it's obvious, they're lame, cheap, lazy, and just really poorly done in every way. I'll give Little and Big Monsters some credit, it's kinda funny, especially compared to the wasteland that is Little Bees. That's genuinely the worst Video Brinkato film I have ever seen. Even the last two I reviewed were better than this. I'm not a fan, okay? So if you like this video, you can check out this one I did on Dingo Pictures. But uh, until next time, I'm gonna go work on something I actually do like. Metal Ween. With real cheese flavor. Who wants popcorn? I want some popcorn. What'd you say there, kid? I can't hear you. I said I want some popcorn. Get your fresh popcorn right here. Are you gonna let me write Willem Van Sprossen did nothing wrong on the board? No. Why?
Because it's edgy and pisses people off. Can't you pick some other controversial figure like, I don't know, Chelsea Manning? But Chelsea Manning didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, what? If I put Chelsea Manning did nothing wrong, I'd just be saying something I actually believe. That's not funny. That's not edgy. Willem Van Sprossen is funny and edgy because he's a violent revolutionary that people really shouldn't be supporting. Okay, how about you just put some dumb shit on the board, like swag hashtag YOLO. Fine. Fucking buzzkill. Is Chelsea Manning still in jail? Yep. That's some bullshit.